we also need to connect this lower arrow here to the upper arrow. And when you're connecting these, you can never cross a vertical asymptote. Well, the only way to do that is to come up like this, cross here, and we know we've got to go up over here. Same idea with this one here. But we now got to be careful where we're crossing our y-axis. We know we can't cross it until we get to here. So it's pretty much straight up. It's supposed to be straight. And then curves over and goes up. Now here on the left side, we know we can't come up, cross, and then come back down and level out. Because that means we would have a zero here. And we knew, know we did not have any zeros. So that means you got to come up, level out just underneath of it. And that's how you finish drawing this graph. Well, we got to do that again for this next problem. But we're going to officially talk about oblique asymptotes. Oblique asymptotes are just like a line or another curve that your graph gets close to as you go off to the far right and to the far left. And oblique asymptotes always occur when the degree at the top is greater than the degree at the bottom. Well, we're going to start off here by going ahead and trying to sketch our graph. We're going to go ahead and find our domain. This one here, it's pretty easy to find your domain because it's going to be everything except what causes the bottom to be zero. Now, we can also go ahead and just factor the top in this case. I always like to have it factored whenever I can. To find your y-intercept, remember to find your y-intercept. That's when you plug in 0. 0 here, 0 here, 0 here gives you a negative 3 over a negative 2. So you get a positive 3 halves. Your zeros, once again, you set it equal to 0, which is really over 1. You cross multiply. So once again, it just boils down to when the top is 0. So what causes the top to be 0? You set each parenthesis equal to 0, and you get negative 1, and you get 3 halves. You have no holes here because you have no common factors top and bottom. But since we still have something in the bottom that didn't cancel out, that's going to be a vertical asymptote. And whatever causes that to be 0 is your vertical asymptote. So your vertical asymptote comes from the bottom, and that's when x is 2. Now, we had said before we're not going to have a horizontal asymptote here because the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom. Horizontal asymptotes only exist when the top and the bottom have equal degrees or the bottom has a larger degree. We now want to go ahead and see what happens on each side of our vertical asymptote. What happens if you try a number slightly smaller than 2? What happens when you try a number slightly greater than 2? And it's easiest to try that into the factored form. You try a number slightly smaller than 2, the bottom is negative, this is positive, and this is positive. So positive times a positive over a negative, and we end up with a negative infinity. Try a number slightly greater than two. <coughs> than two. These don't change, but this one does. When everything's positive, then it's going to go off towards positive infinity. Well, we still need to go ahead and find our oblique asymptote. Longhand division will always, always work to find your oblique asymptote. And it's really just the quotient after you divide. We're not concerned about the remainder. However, since we are dividing here by a linear term, instead of doing longhand, since you're dividing by a linear term, you could do synthetic. So what causes that to be zero? That's what you put in your half box. You're going to put your top coefficients in the top. And then you're going to just go ahead and add down, multiply, add down, multiply, add down. Once again, we're only concerned about the quotient. This right here is your quotient. 
So that means that's your constant. That's the number in front of x. So we end up getting y equals 2x plus 3. We're now going to go ahead and graph all that. You'll see the graph here, but let's talk about it. Here we have our vertical asymptote of x equals 2. Here we have our oblique asymptote of 2x plus 3. That's pretty easy to graph. You know you're going to cross here at 3. And then you got to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1 for your slope. And your asymptotes are always drawn in with a dotted line. You then want to graph your zeros, your y-intercept. You notice just to the left of 2, you go down towards negative infinity. So that means we're going like this. So then all you want to do is go ahead and connect all that. You know you can't cross the vertical asymptote, so you're going to come up here. Go through these points, and then you know you're going to go out towards your oblique asymptote. Because your oblique and you know, horizontal asymptotes are always what you approach when you go far to the right and far to the left. Now, over here, just to the right of 2, we know we go to positive infinity. So just to the right of 2, I know I'm up here. I also know i got to go out towards my horizontal or oblique asymptote. And now all I have to do is connect these. And so the blue is your really your best graph, better than what I just hand drew in, but it gives you an idea of what's going on here and how to do that. And the same idea down here, the blue is your actual graph. So that's how we go about graphing oblique, or not ob graphing oblique asymptotes, but in general graphing rational functions.